The bandstand on Clapham Common, bedecked with flowers in memory of a woman whose killing shocked the nation. The death of Sarah Everard three weeks ago prompted not just a big national debate about the way in which men treat women, but has also, in the last few days especially, unleashed a torrent of allegations about the behaviour of teenage schoolboys towards girls, often in distinguished and expensive private schools. This is the Michael Crick Report for Male Plus. King's College Wimbledon, one of the top schools academically in the country. In the wake of Sarah Everard's murder, a former head girl of the nearby Wimbledon High School for Girls, Ava Vakil, now at Oxford, has collated a hundred accounts from girls of how King's boys treated them. So there were instances in which people were unconscious and they were raped or sexual acts were performed on them without their knowledge or will. Also stories that within relationships, uh, women and girls were raped by their boyfriends or their partners um, because there didn't seem to be a good enough understanding of what consent meant and where that was that understanding. There wasn't enough respect for the girls involved that no actually meant no. I mean, there's one case you have of uh, somebody picking a girl up, putting her over his shoulder and, and saying, I'm, I'm going to you. And then another boy gets involved as well. They really demonstrate a pattern. That behaviour of lifting girls up and taking them away was mentioned multiple times. I think you can see here that this is not one instance or one mistake, but a, a general institutional problem. Last June, Sommer Sara set up the campaign Everyone's Invited. It's posted more than 5,000 allegations about sexual abuse and sexual violence, often by teenage boys. Here are some of the more serious. Boys I didn't know would on the spot ask personal questions, like if I would have a threesome with them, to describe how I had sex with my girlfriend, what porn I watched. They also had competitions about who could get with the ugliest girl, who could sleep with the most girls, which continued until I left school. When I was 14, a guy I knew secretly filmed me getting and doing stuff with his friend and circulated it to loads of people. He then told me he uploaded it to Pornhub and told me to search for my name online. Never found myself and to this day don't 100% know whether he was joking or not. I was coerced into sex repeatedly by my boyfriend at the time. He would rape me while I was asleep and used to tell me that I liked it really. He would grope me in and around school. It took a long time to come to terms with what had happened. The website, if you read the testimonies, you really get an understanding of the complex and pervasive reality of these behaviours. And the worst could be rape, um, sexual assault. But I think what's new, um, you know, especially in my generation, is the image-based abuse. So this is an umbrella term for um, kind of tech abuse. So things like sexting coercion, revenge porn, the non-consensual sharing of intimate photos, these behaviours are permeating social media. So the Facebook and the Twitter, the Instagram, you have these awful group chats. All of these things, you know, are desperately harrowing and have such traumatic and lifelong impacts. And now boys from several other top London schools, including Dulwich College, have been implicated too. At the weekend, the Sunday Times revealed that a former pupil here at Dulwich, Sam Schulenberg, has written to the school with more than 100 accounts, mainly anonymous, from girls who were at neighbouring schools about the behaviour of boys here. One described it as being a breeding ground for sexual predators. Another name source said the school had a long history of being violent sexual abusers. The master of Dulwich, its head teacher, says he condemns the alleged behaviour unreservedly and it's unacceptable. The college is now working with Sam Schulenberg to try and address matters. But the problems don't just involve private schools. Six years ago, this former pupil suffered abuse at her state grammar school in Kent. She wants to remain anonymous. I was 17 at the time um, and I'd been seeing someone in my year 
um, exchanged photos at some point along the way in that relationship, um, which then ended. Um, and as a result of that, um, basically those photos, those images were shared um, in one way by that person um, and then ended up being shared far more widely than, than just the immediate people that they were shared with originally. Across um, the school? Across not just our school, but other schools in the area. Do you think what went to hundreds of people, thousands? Oh, definitely hundreds, definitely hundreds. Worse still, she says, is how the school responded. So they asked me to speak with as many people as possible about whether or not they had images of me, if they had them, who they'd received them from. Now, looking back, I think that it was quite a strange way to deal with it, and one that certainly upset me, probably more than the original thing did. Neither Dulwich nor King's Wimbledon would talk to us. But meanwhile, Ava Vakil yesterday had an online meeting with the head of King's about her shocking accounts. It was very positive, she says. It seems like the school is going to do everything they can to change. It might be tempting to dismiss many of these allegations about schoolboy behaviour simply as, well, boys will be boys. But what's striking is the volume of these allegations and the serious nature of many of them. Maybe because of social media, there has been a big change in recent years and in the attitude of some of our young men.